Hello. 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 你好，你好， Hello. 谢谢。没事儿，手上插了个。Um, okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the August Dashu Virtual Seminar. My name is Shen Yixi. Today, we'll be hearing from Dr. Men Jie Chen from University of Chicago to discuss the computational tools her lab has been developing uh, to work with single cell RNA seq dataset. Before handing over to Dr. Chen, uh, in this five minutes, I would like to give a brief introduction on our Dashu organization. And upcoming activities for the last half of the year. Um, Dashu was founded five years ago. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, we have thousands of members around the globe, and our membership is free. So welcome to sign up so that you can receive our newsletters and event flyers from time to time. Um, other than this virtual seminar, we also host scientific uh, conferences, technical seminars. Um, and we also collaborate with industries and, and academia to host career development events to share practical job hunting tips and experiences. Um, we also have educational lectures such as those legal series to talk about IP protection. Other than that, we always uh, archive our past events on social media. For example, our YouTube channel has the uh, full video of past talks free to everyone to review. Um, official pages on WeChat, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn also have future event flyers, so feel free to follow and keep in touch. Um, as for the virtual seminars for the rest of the year of 2020 and the future, we welcome speakers and researchers to present their high impact research. Uh, we also we're also actively seeking sponsors. Uh, finally, as always, we appreciate your support by attending this seminar and help spreading the words. As I mentioned before, Dashu is a nonprofit uh, organization run by volunteers only. And we always need new volunteers, new blood, and new ideas. Um, if you're interested in helping, please visit dashu.org to sign up or scan the QR code here to visit our WeChat channel. Um, we have upcoming event lined up for September already. If you would allow me to spend two more minutes on that, uh, we'll have Yu Guo, Kyle uh, Kerwin, and Kai Shen representing the 1.3 Acres organization to give a talk on COVID-19 tracking resource uh, on their website. So pl please stay tuned for more details coming up. Without further ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Meng Jie Chen. Uh, Dr. Chen is currently assistant professor um, at University of Chicago. Um, and Dr. Chen received her PhD in computational biology and bioinformatics from Yale and was a former assistant professor at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, she received uh, Alfred Sloan Research Fellowship in computational biology and uh, in, computational, uh, in computational and molecular evolutionary uh, biology uh, in 2019. Um, her research focuses on developing computational methods and open, resource to, open source tool development of high throughput genomic data set uh, uh, and single cell genomics and epi uh, transcriptomics, statistical genomics and cancer genomics. Um, welcome Dr. Chen and I'll stop sharing. Um, okay, so feel free to share your screen. Yeah, sure. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay. Thanks everybody. Uh, let's get started. Um, today I want to talk about our uh, some of the method development to analyze single cell RNA sequencing data. I run a computational and a statistical genomics lab at uh, UChicago. And my lab mainly work on three areas, single cell genomics, epitranscriptomics, and the cancer genomics. So at the end, uh, I will spend uh, two minutes to introduce uh, some of the work with uh, epitranscriptomics. And today I mainly talk about our tool development together with uh, my collaborator Xiang Zhou at U Michigan, uh, Yang Li at U Chicago, 
um, and the data set are mo uh, I get a uh, motivated data set out from my collaborator Oni Basu and Ans Lengel. They are all from U Chicago. So we know our. <coughs> Um, hello, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, some of our recent work in single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. My name is Manji Chen. Uh, I'm running the um, computational and statistical genomics at U Chicago. Uh, our group mainly develop computational and statistical tools to address the challenges uh, from uh, uh, high throughput genomics data. We now mainly work on three areas, single cell genomics, epitranscriptomics, uh, and the cancer genomics. Um, so at the end of this talk, I will spend two minutes to, talk up, uh, to uh, kind of uh, promote our work in epitranscriptomics. And today, I'm, um, mainly, I will mainly focus on single cell genomics. And the master development uh, uh, work are done together with my longtime collaborator, Xiang Zhou at U Michigan. Some of them are with my uh, collaborator, Yan Li, at U Michigan, uh, and the motivated data set uh, provided by Oni Basu and Arsene Gale, uh, also from U Chicago. RNA sequencing is a, uh, I would say, it's a state of the art essay to reveal a snapshot of RNA uh, presence and the quantity at a given moment in time. This is the uh, most popular assay used in genomics nowadays. Starting from uh, 2008, uh, uh, so um, people uh, have uh, using the RNA sequencing um, to measure the average behavior of multiple cells. So in bulk sequencing or RNA sequencing experiment, people will mix uh, the cell all together to measure their uh, behavior. So if we have uh, some of the cell, uh, they are highly activated and some cell, they, they have low expression. I will use red, to dark red to uh, represent the uh, highly uh, activated cell and the yellow ones to represent those low activity cells. And the readout from bark RNA sequencing uh, will be uh, orange-ish because it, it's going to be an average behavior of uh, over um, 10 to the uh, magnitude of five different cells. So if we use this type of technology, uh, the homogeneity is assumed. Uh, starting from 2013, uh, people developed the single cell RNA sequencing data. And in this, this uh, particular technology, we will measure the abundance at a single cell level. And it, it's essential when we uh, want to study the heterogeneity uh, when uh, in some system, the homogeneity is no longer hold. I'll give some example on how, um, why we want to use um, uh, single cell RNA sequencing. So here is a uh, real study case from neuron science. People want to learn how those neuron progenitor cells develop into mature neurons. And in this, um, maturation of neural cells, the cell will migrate from a region called uh, lattico ventricle and through germinal zones, non-germinal zones, and until they uh, reach a region called PIA. During this process, uh, so they will change the morphology, the shape, uh, and also uh, through the change of gene expression. So in old times when people try to study the system, uh, it's very difficult to uh, the uh, getting cells from a uh, certain cell type. So normally you will get a mix of multiple cell types. Um, but now we have a single cell RNA sequencing technology and basically you can separate all these uh, cells at a single cell resolution and it just to provide the, um, the, the uh, enough resolution for those scientists to, to, to learn how a uh, neuron progenitor cells uh, can develop to the uh, mutual neuron. Um, because experimentally, it's almost impossible to separate those cells based on the morphology and based on their, um, uh, the, uh, the physical locations. And the uh, single cell, uh, the technology uh, can be seen as a novel approach 
for the, the cell, uh, the, especially for this case, neuron cell separation. And we can do more promising applications with single cell technology. So we can reconstruct lineage hierarchies, uh, identify rare cell types in um, embryo or uh, stem cells, or understand transcription dynamics. Uh, so in summary, this technology provides potential to solve the problems that used to be challenging, difficult, or even impossible for traditional methods. From an experimental point of view, there are a lot of technical difficulties associated with single cell uh, assay. So for example, there are difficulty in isolation of single cells, um, conversion to uh, cDNA for sequencing, uh, because we cannot, RNA uh, sequence is not stable, we cannot measure from uh, RNA directly, and we need to convert into the CD, uh, RNA to cDNA then for the sequencing. And also there are PCR induced uh, artifacts and capture efficiency. Uh, so overall, this is a fast developing area with many protocols available. We're not uh, going to address technical difficulties. Uh, so we are going to address um, the, uh, 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 we are not going to address technical difficulty associated with the experiment itself, but we are going to uh, address technical artifact uh, because uh, once uh, we obtain the data. Most of our work focuses on accounting for the unwanted variation during the experiment. So, when, so if your uh, experiment is down, um, and uh, uh, you still uh, like wonder wh whether there is any uh, batch effect associated experiment uh, you want to do, you want to uh, correct for the confounding effect, or you want to do some imputation, you want to align different samples, uh, you want to do pre-processing. So that's the part uh, we, uh, our uh, uh, expertise, where uh, is our expertise yeah, so um, we developed a, a bunch of methods uh, since 2017, um, and uh, including uh, the method, uh, early on method developed for smart sequencing data, and which is the, a, a, um, a, a protocol uh, similar to the, um, the uh, similar to the uh, a bark sequencing and with PCR amplification. Uh, and then later on, the method including the DMATCH and the HIPPO, so those are methods developed for 10x sequencing, uh, will be our uh, focus today. Um, so 10x genomic protocol is the most popular uh, single cell RNA uh, sequencing protocol now. And in this uh, particular uh, assay, uh, so the, the cells, uh, they will be barcoded and then, uh, so th these cells will be shooting into oil droplet one by one. So by chance, uh, you're going to contain uh, one cells in each of the droplets. And then, then these droplets will be sent for the sequencing. Uh, so basically, we're going to have the readout uh, for each of the cell um, and, and with all their uh, gene expression information. So the single cell RNA sequencing data can be organized into a matrix. Um, in, uh, so we can use rows to represent different cells and columns to represent the different genes. Um, and for a 10X protocol, uh, it's, uh, um, we can cover uh, up to 10 to the, the uh, uh, or magnitude of four number of genes. Um, and typically, uh, we will have several thousand and around uh, 10,000 ish uh, cells in one assay. Um, so every entry uh, yij in this matrix represents the number of RNA molecules mapped to gene j in cell i. Um, this is a relatively small number, especially if it's a 10x, uh, it's a number uh, from 0 to 10. And also, you, you can get up to uh, 100, um, but the uh, readout from 10x protocols is uh, uh, relatively small. Um, and this YIJ in 10x protocol represents UMI counts. So what is the UMI? 
UMIs, they are short sequences added to the RNA fragments before PCR amplification. So the purpose is to reduce errors and the quantitative bias introduced by the amplification. So in another word, um, um, if we use UMI directly, uh, there is no bias introduced by the amplification, and uh, we, we are looking at the absolute amount of the our RNA molecules uh, in the cell. Um, so this is a great advantage over SmartSeq protocol, uh, where uh, we need to handle a lot of bias introduced by the PCR application. So that's why the 10x protocol uh, become uh, very popular right now. Okay, so um, we, uh, before we talk about the technical issues in the data set, uh, I just want to give you some uh, motivation and uh, give you some view of the single cell RNA sequencing data and the, what's the difference between um, R, like a bark or ordinary RNA uh, seq with single cell RNA seq. So this is the data set we get from a true et al. 2016. And for these uh, cell types listed on the right, um, one, two, three, four, seven different cell types, uh, we have both bark sequencing data and single cell RNA sequencing data. So on the left-hand side, uh, each of the uh, column represent a, um, a, uh, a sample. And, and on the uh, right-hand side, each of the columns represent a, a single cell. And, and in both heat maps, each row represents a, uh, a, a gene. So we can see that, um, in general, the bark sequencing data looks very similar to the single cell. But the single cell RNA sequencing data, they are much sparse, because this is um, um, log-transformed uh, data, so we add a pseudo count uh, of uh, uh, 0.1. So those uh, bluish, all this bluish area, they actually, they are zeros in the original data set. So from this comparison, we can see that there are excessive so many zero values in single cell RNA sequencing data. So the general pattern we can capture, uh, capture by both the protocols, they are the same, um, but they are much more uh, 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 zeros in the single cell RNA sequencing. Basically, it's a very sparse uh, data matrix. Uh, so let's have some uh, quantitative measurement of the uh, about the, the zero uh, rate or zero, zero detection rate or zero proportions. So here um, are the data from three different data sets uh, across different uh, protocols. Um, and plotting the histograms uh, for a uh, gene level uh, zero uh, in, uh, rate or zero uh, detection rate or zero proportion. And I use the uh, dashed uh, vertical line to represent the median uh, uh, within this data set. So we can see that um, the, in the, uh, the, the first data set, Gruen et al., we have 50% uh, of the genes have uh, a, a zero detection rate around 75. Um, and, and in ZZO, uh, so 50% of the cells uh, have a, a zero detection rate greater than um, 0.85. Yeah, so which means the majority of the entries uh, from the readout of single cell RNA seq data matrix are zeros. Um, there are several widely used assumptions in single cell RNA sequencing data. Um, so they are kind of all uh, surrounded by, by the, 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 the theme uh, of excessive zero. So how to handle these zeros and how to um, uh, incorporate or impute uh, these uh, zeros for uh, downstream analysis. So first uh, assumption is single cell RNA seq contain excessive zeros uh, due to dropout, no matter they are UMI data or they are count data. So the second is uh, the coefficient variation can be used uh, for uh, as a matrix to select features uh, that that uh, um, are associated with the uh, heterogeneity. And the third one is normalization or imputation is recommended as pre-processing steps. 
Um, so we're today we're going to review uh, uh, these assumptions one by one. Um, before we're doing that uh, like formally, uh, I will just like a, a briefly overview uh, what is a typical workflow uh, for RNA sequencing uh, data analysis. Uh, so here is uh, some example I extracted from the most popular software for this type of analysis called RAT. Uh, basically with the um, UMI count data matrix as the input. So the first of all, we'll, uh, first step, we'll do some quality control. This will including some summary statistics correlated with zero detection rate, uh, the percentage of mitochondrial genes, and then uh, we'll filter out some of the unwanted cells and unwanted genes. And then the next step is normalization. Uh, so for this normalization, uh, there are um, two, uh, basically two main, um, uh, I would say like two main schools. Uh, so for first uh, type, uh, they will do some normalization very similar to the DE-seq in, uh, in uh, bark RNA-seq. Uh, so they will estimate a scaling factor associated with each cell and then normalize uh, uh, all the cells based on their library size. And the second one is they try to uh, normalize the, um, the, the variability across different genes, try to stabilize uh, the, uh, the variance. So this is the, uh, another approach implemented in SURAT. It's called uh, SC transform. So both of the approach, they are very uh, popular uh, uh, methods uh, right now for normalization. So once you perform the normalization, uh, make all the cells comparable. So now the next step is to do feature selection. So people uh, use variance or coefficient of variance as two typical uh, metrics uh, to select those, those highly variable uh, features. And then focus on the, uh, the, the downstream analysis only on this uh, subset uh, of the gene or this set of uh, in, gene of interest. So next is to dimension reduction. So dimension reduction, uh, typically people use this approach to do both virilization and the uh, uh, denoising. De and, and after that, and people will do clustering. And finally, based on the clustering result, then they will assign the cells, uh, cell type uh, to each of the clusters. So this is a typical workflow. Okay, so, um, and, and the, in this flow, we can see that the single cell RNA-seq, um, they are uh, normalized or uh, imputed, and the people use coefficient of variation for feature selection. Um, and uh, because they are all assume, like uh, based on the assumption that single cell RNA-seq contain excessive zeros due to uh, technical artifact, due to dropouts. So this is something they want to fix in the uh, workflow in the pipeline. Um, and when we start to uh, analyze single cell RNA sequencing data, and we start to check these uh, assumptions one by one in, in Connex. Um, so the first, the, so first is about, uh, first claim is about the excessive zero values is due to dropout. Um, and then uh, we look at whether the dropout can introduce excessive zero inflation. So at, first of all, we want to focus on homogeneous population. So we look at the uh, different data set and only focus on one cell type at a time. Um, so if we only look at the yellow ones, so these are the, cell, these are the cells from uh, CD90 plus B cells. Um, and and the, the four column shows the, uh, this particular cell type from different data set. We look at the zero proportion as a function of the mean UMI uh, per gene. And, and uh, we uh, show three curves. So the first curve is Poisson. The second curve is negative binomial. And the third one is uh, zero inflated negative binomial. So in a person, um, the, uh, so basically we only assume 
uh, a sampling uh, process uh, 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 can be modeled by a uh, Poisson distribution. And in negative binomial, uh, another uh, term is um, introduced, it's called dispersion uh, to capture the deviation from Poisson. Um, and the, the negative binomial is the, uh, the, the distribution people use to model the count data of, from uh, Barker RNA sequencing data. Zero inflated negative binomial introduce another component is called zero inflation. So besides the natural sampling based on either negative binomial or Poisson, and this distribution will include additional uh, term to model the dropout. Okay, so uh, we can see that if we only focus on the, uh, the, the yellow points now, uh, we can see that uh, for most of the case, we can just use Poisson to approximate the, uh, the distribution. And, and the, um, so some of the genes, they follow negative binomial, but there is absolutely uh, like no necessary to model a, uh, the, the, any of the data type by zero inflated negative binomial, right? So the negative the zero inflated negative binomial basically uh, inflated uh, uh, above uh, the entire data distribution. So this is just some realization and we did uh, some formal tests. So basically we did uh, some uh, likelihood ratio test. The basic idea is we want to measure uh, uh, for, for which case the likelihood is higher. So in the first comparison, we compare the negative binomial versus uh, Poisson, uh, which means we want to check uh, how many of the genes uh, we should use a negative binomial uh, to improve the modeling. And in the second set of comparison, uh, we use a likely ratio test between zero inflated negative binomial versus Poisson. So this test is basically asks the question that whether we, we are going to introduce an actual component to model, model the zero inflation or model the dropout. Uh, so we run these two sets of comparison um, uh, on different data sets and we use the red colors to represent the p-values obtained from the first test and the, the, um, the blue ones represent the p-values uh, from the uh, second test. And uh, on the uh, left hand side, so if the gene has a small p-value indicating that those genes could benefit from a more complicated model. And, and if the p-value um, are around one, which means this test is not significant. So the gene on the, the, those area, they are not at all benefit from using a more complicated model. So we can see that for some of the genes, only a small proportion of the genes, they can be benefit if you use a negative binomial. But for almost all of the genes, there is absolutely like no benefit uh, if we introduce a additional zero inflation. So to summarize, the simplest parametric count model Poisson is sufficient to leverage the biological information contains in the UMI data. We don't need to use a zero inflated negative binomial, this uh, more complicated model. Um, so what, what is the, um, the, the, the major driver for the zeros we actually observed in the UMI data. So all these uh, analysis, they are based on uh, homogeneous population. We, we only evaluate one cell type at a time, but how to explain uh, the excessive zeros we uh, observed in real data set. So the, the underlying driver is the cell type heterogeneity. Uh, so here I'm showing the CD34 plus cells from Jen et al. 2017 paper. Um, and this is the, a, um, the population of the cells with uh, uh, subgroup uh, subtype structures. Uh, so in total, we have around uh, 300 cells, but there are three subtypes uh, show, uh, show on, on the uh, U map so they can be perfectly uh, separated with each other. 
So we uh, still want to plot the zero proportion as a function of the mean UMI per gene. And we also draw the Poisson curve uh, as a, uh, a uh, comparison. So we can see that if we focus on each of the group, uh, homogene, relatively uh, homogeneous uh, uh, cell, cell uh, population at one time. Um, so the zero proportion curve match very well uh, with the uh, Poisson distribution. But if we mix together, so the, 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 big, uh, the plot showing black, and we can see that they start to disperse uh, from Poisson curve. So this is uh, why we can uh, observe uh, the uh, excessive zeros uh, in the real data set. So that's the, uh, the, the major drive is the uh, cell type uh, heterogeneity. So uh, from here, we can show that the first uh, assumption is not correct. The dropout, the, they don't uh, introduce excessive zero inflation for a homogeneous population. Um, and the zero detection rate of few gene can be benefited from uh, using negative binomial, uh, but a zero inflation component is absolutely unnecessary. Uh, so we do observe some of the genes that deviate from Poisson and need a negative binomial to model. And, and the next question we ask is, um, wh what are the, uh, the genes? So what are the outlier genes? So uh, we did an additional experiment. So in, in this experiment, we checked the, uh, the, um, the observed uh, zero proportion or zero detection rate and versus expected uh, uh, that, that was calculated based on Poisson distribution. So uh, the, 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 that statistic is shown as a y-axis here. And we, we uh, discovered, uh, so for, for genes, uh, like the uh, pseudo genes or protein coding genes, um, we can see that although there are a dispersion, but the, the, the median or the mean values are centered around zero, which means uh, we still have uh, observed zero detection rate, uh, very similar to uh, expected. But there are a certain group of genes, uh, they have cons consistently uh, higher uh, dispersion uh, from the uh, Poisson. So um, the, these genes are um, shown in the uh, uh, red box, including HLA genes, IGC genes, and the TRC genes. So uh, we, we found that all those gene groups, they represent inherent uh, uh, heterogeneity. For example, the HLA genes, they are uh, highly polymorphic. The TRC genes, they are the uh, the immune-related genes undergoing VDJ recombinations. So which means um, in, in even we, we are using a finer group, grouping label. So those group labels, they can still not capture full the, uh, the heterogeneity fully. So if you have inherent heterogeneity, uh, so you should expect the, um, the, the zero uh, detection rate dispersed from Poisson. So another take home from this slide is um, uh, you, uh, when you analyze a new data set, so you should expect those HLA, IGC, or TRC gene uh, has uh, more excessive uh, zero values than the other genes. Um, so uh, in our manuscript, we suggest that um, we can create some black list of genes that they, those are, are known to be dispersed from uh, Poisson. And, and uh, uh, just, uh, just be cautious with this set of the gene. Okay, so the second one is the uh, coefficient of variation can be used for feature selection to identify um, the uh, heterogeneous genes. So we compared uh, coefficient of variance and variance uh, with uh, zero proportion. And actually, we found only looking at zero proportion actually is a better indicator for uh, heterogeneity. So we're still uh, looking at the, uh, each of the uh, cell type separately and then combined. Um, so to make a 
um, to make a uh, the uh, a metric better indicator for heterogeneity, we hope that this particular matrix can separate um, the uh, homogeneous cell population and versus uh, several different types cell combined. Um, so let's look at this uh, uh, yellow dot, blue dot, and versus those uh, uh, green uh, cross. So in a zero proportion case, uh, for the um, single cell type, and we can see that the, uh, the, the, the detected zero proportion very well, and if you combine different cell types, they start to disperse um, and, and, and uh, inflate it. And in terms of the variance, so we can see that uh, there is no separation, uh, clear separation between combined cells or uh, homogeneous cell uh, types. You can have, um, I guess, so, so the, 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 you, you high value or low value is a single type or this is combined. The, the, So for the combined and uh, have uh, both high value and the low value, and there is no separation between combined cells or separated uh, homogeneous cell types. So this is uh, just a comparison showing that zero proportion is actually a better indicator uh, for uh, feature selection. And there is an, another disadvantage of a coefficient of variation. We know it's calculated by um, variance divided by mean. And uh, numerically, it's not very stable if you have a smaller mean. So zero proportion, instead, it's a very uh, um, uh, robust uh, estimate uh, for the, uh, for, for the uh, 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 heterogeneity selection. So we, um, to perform the feature selection, uh, we propose a formal test based on the uh, zero inflation. So our null hypothesis is the proportion uh, for a given gene. So this is a, a test performed uh, at each gene level. Um, so the, the null hypothesis is uh, the, uh, the zero proportion detected for this particular gene uh, is uh, equal to uh, the Poisson rate. And alternative uh, will be the detected zero um, in, uh, inflation is greater than the uh, Poisson rate. So we will use uh, Poisson as the null model and only test for the zero counts. Um, so remember here, uh, we, we treated the values as uh, zeros and the non-zeros, so basically count as indicators, and, and we don't model uh, the, the counts uh, of one, two, three, or five. So, so uh, that's why uh, I actually like this test well because it's a uh, simplicity. We only look at the zero counts, not at the counts. Okay, so for the um, underlying distributions, um, so we can we can show that. Uh, so uh, for the if it, this is a mix of uh, uh, Poisson or negative binomial or zero inflate negative binomial, so under the now they are all uh, Poisson. And, and, and we can also write out the, uh, the, uh, the uh, proportion uh, under the uh, alternative. Okay, so under the alternative, uh, why, uh, so in previous slides, why we observe that variance or coefficient of variance um, are, not, uh, are not a good matrix for the uh, heterogeneity uh, selection? So here, we can use mathematics to uh, give more uh, intuition. So um, we can write down the variance under the noun and the variance under the, the uh, alternative. So all these are listed uh, under the table um, uh, 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 at the lower panel. So we can, we can see that if we use zero proportion under the noun uh, or under the uh, alternative, we always have higher value. But if we focus on the variance under the alternative, 
we, we don't necessarily have a smaller variance. So that's why it's really hard to distinguish uh, between um, the um, combined case or the, the uh, single cell type case because uh, from mathematics, we can show that the variance is not necessarily higher uh, under the alternative. But the zero inflation or zero protection is strictly higher uh, under the uh, alternative. So that's the uh, mathematical foundation uh, for our uh, zero inflation test. Um, so th this is how we compute the, uh, the zero inflation test or the z-score. So into detail about the statistics and if you're interested, then you can check the technical details later. Uh, so still use our previous example on CD34 plus cells and we have uh, three different subgroups. So we can apply this test on different subset of the, the, these, uh, the data. So if we apply on all of the CD34 cells, we get a huge z-score indicating that, oh, so the, the, for, for this, um, there is absolutely uh, heterogeneity and this is a, a red line and we should focus on. And if we only constrain the test on subset one, subset two, or subset three, and we can show that uh, for the subset two or subset three, and, and the, uh, so the, it's, uh, the, the, we have a very small z-score and, and basically saying that uh, the, the, this, um, this population is uh, homogeneous. And for the subtype one, uh, we have a, a relatively higher z-score um, because if we look at the red, red population, indeed, it has more uh, heterogeneity and the blue ones and the, uh, the yellow ones. Okay, so this example just showing that zero inflation test uh, can be used uh, to apply to our data set and identify uh, features uh, for uh, the uh, heterogeneity. Okay, so the, the second, uh, uh, now we check the second, uh, the, uh, the uh, claim. Uh, we found the coefficient variation is not ideal for feature selection. Instead, we should use zero proportions uh, for uh, feature selection if you are looking for the features uh, for clustering analysis. So the third one is uh, normalization or imputation is recommended as pre-processing steps. Um, okay, so that's the last claim we want to check. Um, so as, as, uh, as I explained from the, uh, the, the workflow in the thread, um, so the sequencing depths based on a normalization is one of the popular methods. So basically people want to estimate a um, scaling factor for each of the cells in order to account for uh, some uh, technical artifact from the library sizes. Um, but when we look at the, the uh, 10x data set, we found those sequencing depths, they're actually confounded with cell types um, and if we use normalization, um, and the normalization can obscure uh, biological information. Uh, so here we are compa comparing uh, CD14 plus monocytes versus CD19 plus B cells. Um, so those uh, uh, we, are, we are showing the box plots uh, for the number of counts per cell across different data set. We can see that the CD19 plus B cells they have consistently higher counts uh, compared to the other type, no matter what is the data set we're looking at. Uh, so in other words, so the, the, the counts or the sequencing depths, so they are uh, confounded with uh, cell types. So if you use a size factor to correct for the difference, and then you eliminate the difference between two cells. Um, so that's the uh, the the um, the um, the take home from that slide. So if the cell type heterogeneity is not appropriately taking into account the pre-processing, such as normalization or imputation, can become inappropriate and can introduce unwanted noise. Um, so here, 
um, I'm showing um, the uh, normalization based on uh, the other type, right? So we mentioned that there are two uh, popular normalization approaches. Uh, one is size factor based. So the other one is called um, the, the uh, SC transform. Um, so we can show that, uh, so if we focus on the, the B panel, we can show that um, in the, uh, the, the red and the blue ones, there are two set cell types. Once you use SC transform to normalize the data and you kind of collapse all this uh, information together and make all the cells look, almost look uh, identical, eliminate uh, some uh, variation. And, and, and the, the element of variation, sometimes they are essential. So if we look at the panel C, and we can show that, uh, so, so this CD7, 8, uh, A, B, and MS4, A1, so these markers, they are uh, supposed to uh, be um, the uh, uh, kind of a difference across different cell types. But if we use uh, SC transform, so we can see there, we uh, artificially uh, reduced their uh, uh, differences. So similar, we can show that if you use uh, imputation method like DCA, um, you can uh, kind, kind of eliminate the, uh, the variability and reduce the signal. So, so that's something we don't want. So we, if we want to uh, keep the signal to the downstream differential expression, and we don't recommend to, to perform normalization or imputation uh, on, the, on, on the, the, the data, single cell data, before you're doing class rate. So, um, so the last still is not true. So we, we, we do not recommend to perform either normalization or imputation, and what will be a better approach? Um, so the, a better approach will be to perform the clustering first and to take into account the cell type heterogeneity first, including clustering as the uh, pre-processing step um, and will uh, uh, make your data just fit to a uh, simple Poisson. Uh, and we also know some um, metrics to perform the heterogeneity. So basically, you want to bring all these points all together, we develop this pipeline called HIPPO. Um, so basically, uh, taking the UM accounts data as input, uh, we will use the zero proportion test or zero inflation test to select the features. Um, and these features, uh, they are um, um, like markers uh, for, uh, like for uh, the uh, heterogeneity so that we can uh, use those to perform clustering. And once we uh, perf perform the clustering and, and we can continue the procedure. So each time we only separate the clusters into two groups. And then we can repeat the procedure and continue to separate the uh, most heterogeneous group. Uh, so um, we, in another word, we will perform iterative feature selection and the class rate. And this is just showing how uh, the uh, HIPPO uh, will, will uh, report uh, on the uh, gen mix for uh, EQ data set. Uh, so um, we, we run, k equal to two uh, to k equal to six. So uh, we ask the HIPPO uh, to separate this data iteratively uh, from two clusters and to six clusters. So we can see that uh, at the first step, uh, it will uh, select the yellow group as the most heterogeneous one. And in the second step, it will pick out uh, the green ones, and the next step, pick out the uh, uh, blue ones, and until uh, you separate uh, all of the uh, the clusters according to the uh, pre-specified um, the uh, cluster numbers. Um, and these HIPPO actually reflect how the nature um, organizes information. Um, because the cell types, they are a relative concept. Um, at the bottom level, uh, so each cell will have their own identity. 
And the cell uh, clustering structures actually uh, organized the, in the uh, hierarchies, right? So there is uh, no unified or like only correct grouping structure. Um, so what you have is actually a hierarchy to describe the relative um, similarity of uh, different cells. So HIPPO is um, the, this uh, one method actually can capture this information, not just reporting a, a flat separation of the cells. So instead, we, we are offering um, a hierarchical uh, organization of the information across the, the, the different uh, cells. Um, and, uh, from, so, yeah, so uh, this is another view uh, on TSME to show how the HIPPO will uh, operate. So basically, it will start with the, uh, the very middle so the, as the uh, population level mean, and then separate um, the subgroups, calculate the, uh, the, the mean for each subpopulation, and then uh, moving it around. So uh, this is just the uh, virilization. So we can show that the zero inflation test in HIPPO uh, can help better identify uh, the challenging subtypes. Um, so we have this uh, example with um, T cells. We all know that uh, T cells, they are um, especially the, like, the, the um, memory T cells, naive T cells, hyper T cells, uh, regulatory T cells. So those cells, they are uh, very uh, challenging to be uh, distinguished uh, from each other. We can see that the uh, HIPPO uh, can perfectly uh, separate these uh, regulatory T cells and the hyper T cells and the memory T cells. Um, but if you use RAT or SC transformed um, um, data plus red, uh, so they cannot distinguish between uh, hypo cells or uh, memory cells uh, because they are uh, similar, very similar to each other. So why why the, the, that is the case? Um, because when the hippo try to separate different cells for each of the hierarchy, each of the steps, so we will run the zero inflation test and use a different set of cells. Um, th that is to say that the, the features we use to separate helper cells from the memory cells, they are different from the features we separate B cells and NK cells because they are uh, at the different level of uh, on the uh, hierarchy. But all the other methods, um, they will use the same set of the genes, the same information to perform the clustering. So that's why I, I believe people at least some circumstances uh, have um, an advantage um, in terms of uh, extracting the uh, most relevant information uh, for some of the uh, subtypes. Um, HIPPO uh, is uh, implemented as a, um, a open source software and it has a lot of uh, nice uh, virilization and offer a lot of uh, output for downstream analysis. Um, so for, for example, it will return the zero proportion as a function of the mean uh, for uh, different group numbers. And we can also label at uh, each split uh, what are the genes uh, that are, um, uh, 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 contribute to the separation. What are the genes are selected uh, for the uh, splits. And they also can provide the, um, the, uh, the heat map to show that the expression level of selectic markers across different clusters. And you can also report uh, some of the, uh, the uh, differentially uh, expressed genes. So here, I also want to emphasize that there are, there are some difference uh, between selected features uh, versus the uh, differentially expressed genes. Um, so the, the features are only selected based on the zero proportion, uh, but the differential expressed uh, it's a, uh, it's a, um, um, more, um, so for, for the, um, for the zero inflation, we only use the information, uh, with zero values, 
but the differential expression we test, we do use information from other counts. So for example, you can have a uh, differential expression uh, between um, two and versus 10, but this information is not included in the zero test because in the zero test, we only count uh, the number of zero versus uh, non-zero. Um, so if you run the HEPO, uh, it will uh, return the output uh, related to zero detection, and you also report the uh, cell type specific uh, differential gene list. Okay, so here is another realization for the uh, HIPPO output. Um, if, if you set the maximum K, uh, you will just run the procedure iteratively and also show you the different colors, uh, what other uh, cell populations uh, can be separated from uh, each uh, split. Uh, okay, so we also have other single cell uh, works. Um, so the uh, uh, the early methods are based on single uh, uh, smart seq. So we have SCPLS uh, is a method uh, to control for confounding factors. We also for Viper, so that's an imputation method for smart seq data, and and um, uh, also a, a new relative new work is called the DMatch. So that's a method you can apply on 10x data too. Uh, so it's a fast and accurate alignment of the, uh, the uh, single cell RNA sample. Uh, finally, I want to spend two minutes to uh, promote our work in epitranscriptomics. Uh, so the, uh, we, we are one part of CEGS, so that's the center supported by NIH related to uh, epitranscriptomics related uh, uh, technology development. Uh, we develop uh, web portals and the software uh, and also uh, make public uh, data sets and also provide uh, educational opportunities. So the web portal we develop is called uh, RAPIC um, and uh, it's available um, at the uh, following link. Uh, so basically it's a web browser so you can search uh, what, uh, whatever uh, genes or genomic regions you are interested in, and, and we can realize the um, uh, RNA modification and also all the available uh, epigenetic trans uh, markers uh, we incorporated from um, uh, ENCODE. Uh, so basically, uh, we use customized pipelines to analyze all of the um, uh, public available uh, M6A sequencing data, uh, and, and we uh, curate all the peak sets and put it together with the ENCODE epigenetic data and also provide a lot of uh, virilization and multiple analysis uh, features. And we also uh, release a bunch of uh, software including differential analysis tools, um, RIDA and the easy M6A. So it's a pipeline for uh, uh, M6A sequencing, um, pre-processing. We also have a future plan uh, for a uh, new method. Um, so you, if you are interested in this uh, new field, um, please uh, keep, keep an eye on our uh, work. Uh, so all our uh, methods have been provided with easy to follow online tutorials. And if you have any interest, um, any questions, feel free to uh, ask our uh, authors. So in the release of the uh, 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 RAPIC1, we included um, uh, data from 11 uh, different species uh, and over uh, 600 different samples. And we record over uh, 14 uh, million peaks. Um, and in the uh, RAPIC uh, uh, number two, version two, we are going to incorporate more samples from more technologies and adding more uh, RNA modifications, not limited to um, M6A, but we are also adding pseudo U, uh, M1A, and M M M5C. And we will also adding more annotation features such as RBM, uh, RBP binding sites, uh, or uh, GWAS results, or GTAX data to facilitate assessment and interpretation of RNA modification. Okay, so I will stop here and thanks all my uh, collaborators. Uh, and uh, different uh, funding agencies. Okay, thank you for your time. 
Thank you, Dr. Chun, for the very informative uh, talk. Um, I'll stop right here.